With the cost of living on the rise, housing prices skyrocketing, and inflation at an all-time high, there's no shortage of tough issues facing Canadians. Welcome to another episode of Tough Topics. I'm your host, Vani Sweetland, and today we're joined by town councillor and realtor Malia Shahid. Well, there's no time like the present, so let's jump right into it. You're a politician, but you're also a realtor by trade. We've seen skyrocketing housing prices all across the GTA for over three years now, with no signs of slowing down anytime soon. What do you think the problem is? And of course, this is a big one, but how do we fix it? Bonnie, there'll be two huge issues coming to us at a very high rate. One is our inflation and the other one is housing crisis. Now, if you tell me which one's fat, which one's the most important, I'd say they're both hand in hand. Right. We have 650,000 homes to be more, to be built more in order to be at the national average. Right. And where are we right now? We have promises from the federal government. We have the promises and for $445 million um, commitment from the Ford government for Ontario alone. But action speaks louder, implementing these fundings and actually coming and realizing that the solutions that were based on the task force and everything else, will they be implemented or not, or how fast they would be implemented. Toronto alone, half of the population in Toronto are renters. Where are we standing? My, my, our children, my children, they're in their teens. So let's say, can they buy the million dollar townhouse as soon as they get their first job? No. I mean, when we bought our home, our first home in uh, Whitby, in let's say maybe about 2006, it was under $250,000. Wow. That home right now is closer to a million dollar. A small townhouse, roughly about 1,500 square footage. Where are we going with all of this, right? Yeah. So the solution, in my opinion, is basically making sure the promises that are met, the, sorry, the promises that are made are actually being kept by all levels of government. Yeah. Municipalities can only do so much. Municipalities have to manage the infrastructure, the parks, and everything else that needs to come with new housing. Municipalities have very small budgets to go with. It is up to the federal government first, and then the Ontario government to actually do something about it. We have a huge job crisis right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are not going to fulfill everything in steps, we are never going to get rid of our housing crisis. We have to make sure there are the immigrants that are being flushed through the system, which is fantastic, but they need to be dispersed all throughout the country. They cannot just all of them come in the GTA and burden our housing uh, crisis, burden our job market. We cannot let that happen. There has to be a plan that this, this many immigrants are coming, where are they going to be placed and what resources are going to be deployed for them? What jobs will be ready for them to be employed? Right. And there has to be, in, exactly, there has to be restrictions placed on whoever is new to Canada that this is where they will have to be for this amount of years in order to make sure that the congestion that we have in our job market, in our housing market is, is taking care of the population that we have right now. No, and I I'm agree good. wholeheartedly. I think one of the biggest concerns I have, and I've said this so many times on this show and in some of my articles, is we've got an entire generation that may never actualize their dream of home ownership. And I think it's quite sad. It is absolutely sad. Where will our children be in the next few years? Can they afford the, the homes that are listed right now yeah. can can they even afford to rent 
that is the question. Yeah, I mean, the it's... renter's market is just as challenging. We know that for the longest while, we were in a less than 1% vacancy rate here in Toronto. Um, and we don't really see these numbers improving. So it is quite catastrophic. And I, I'm really hoping that our legislative bodies will get together and actually get some things done because we have an entire generation depending on them. But just after these messages, we will jump right back into housing and everything else with Malia Shahid. Malia, you were a candidate in the most recent 2021 federal election. You were the conservative candidate for Whitby. I congratulate you on running what was, of course, a hard-fought race. But many conservative supporters are looking on and saying, where did we go wrong? Not just in places like Whitby, but frankly, all across the country. What are some of the things you think the conservative party needs to do to secure more wins in future and upcoming elections? Well, what went wrong was the fact that we are in a middle of pandemic. The Trudeau government uh, chose the right time to run for re-election. They did not go anywhere. They got the same results out of this election. They got a minority government. That means there is no trust within our nation with this government. However, they have picked uh, the lesser evil out there, in their opinion. And that's what I feel. I feel the fact that we were not able to get them the message that they wanted to hear. If you looked at the platform that came in, it was an amazing platform, which was uh, fair to the immigrants, fair to the residents, fair to our healthcare, fair to so many issues that were there. But the messaging, in my opinion, we could have driven the message even stronger. And that's where we went. We didn't. Um, people did not trust the conservative leader, I guess, in my opinion, although Aaron O'Toole, I feel, did his best to get out there, tell people what um, he thought that would be the most um, pragmatic. Best option, pragmatic or the best option for voters. But yeah. in this time of pandemic, it was very hard for him to reach places and people to convey his message. You have to understand the writ period was as short as possible. Um, and that's what where I feel the Trudeau government really thought this through to bring the election at the time where they could get um, a majority if they do really well or minimum a minority. And that's what they've got. I feel the voters have spoken. I feel that Conservatives as us, our leader, whoever it may be, will have to learn from what they have um, seen and go from one candidate to another and do a overall overview of what happened. And that's exactly what we have to look at. I see a leader that whoever will be the next leader will have to resonate with every component of Canada every segment of people, be it multicultural, be it um, people of color, be it um, new immigrants, old immigrants, all communities will have to uh, be reached out and uh, being given the confidence that the conservatives are ready to lead. And that's exactly where we need to be. We have shown leadership in the financial crisis of 2018, uh, sorry, um, when the, the time of Jim Flirty in 2008, 2009, we showed leadership. We showed Canada how we can get out of that crisis that we had. Now and now we're faced with a similar crisis. And as we were just saying in our first segment, we know that the cost of living is going up. We know that inflation is at an all-time high. So all of these issues are, are paramount. And uh, frankly, I think they're on the minds of most Canadians. We have people who are really worried about where they're going to get food to, to put on the table to feed their families. We know that grocery store prices are, are getting higher and higher. So these issues are, are very real. And I, I will say this, uh, my hat is off to Aaron O'Toole, been not just him, but, but any leader that had to fight an election during a pandemic, because the pandemic just adds all of these uh, additional layers of challenge, I can imagine. 
Absolutely. And you know, the fact is, I, I was just talking on the dinner table with someone just last night, and this is what we were talking about. If the gas prices are $40 more than what they used to pay only a few months ago, we have a huge issue. Why isn't the federal government looking at other solutions? Okay, gas prices are high, carbon tax is there, and carbon tax is increasing. Okay, so what are the options to bring a uh, affordable car with environment friendly car? Where are the incentives for these industries to actually bring those cars afford in an affordable manner to people for them to to have an option for this. I mean, inflation is such a huge issue right now where people will have to choose between putting the food on the table or paying their bills. And that's exactly what the problem is. Where is someone who's going from paycheck to paycheck going to cover that cost, high cost of just fuel to fuel right. their car? And it comes down to, to fiscal responsibility, which is something we're going to touch on just after these messages. We were just speaking before the break about all of the issues plaguing Canadians. Fiscal responsibility has long been a pillar and principle within the Conservative Party. And again, with the cost of living rising, inflation, which we've discussed at an all-time high, most Canadians do have their minds on these things. Uh, you, of course, Malia, were just speaking about the issues we have with gas prices. What do you feel a modern Conservative Party needs to do to tackle all of these issues that, again, for most Canadians are paramount? Well, our Prime Minister does not feel that monetary issues are a big problem. And when that kind of rhetoric is uh, spread or rhetoric is said or implied, we have a huge problem, Wani. And I know Conservatives have led this country in a, in a way where they have been pragmatic and been very um, conscious of the affordability and where the country should be going for the next many, many, many years. And I feel the conservative government is ready. We have the right kind of people who will lead this country. We just have to make sure that we resonate with the Canadians out there, with the voters who want to see change. It's not about saying the right thing. It's about also showing through leadership that we are ready to lead. We are ready to send the message that our top priority is affordability. Our top priority is for Canadians to enjoy their livelihoods. And that's exactly what it is. We are living paycheck to paycheck. And that is the reality of it. And until the government does not realize that if they're bringing a middle class budget, a feminine budget, using these fancy words is not going to help until we actually see action on the table. We were talking about hus housing crisis just a few minutes ago, right? Yes. So we can scream about the housing crisis of the next big issue or the issue of importance right now. But until we don't see in the selling system that the bidding war has ended or slowing down, the market slowing down, we will never see change. Interest rates are going to be hiking. Where are people going to be filling that gap as soon as interest rate hikes? These people are going to run to get another job, a second job or a third job. I mean, we have a huge crisis sitting right in front of us. Yeah, yeah. Fancy words are not going to help us. A no. feminist budget or a middle class budget. Okay, so do you even understand what middle class is? Right. We, we are in a huge crisis right now. And, and I'm, I'm just talking about the problems, we have to look at solutions. And that's what we have to look at. I mean, when you looked at our conservative platform that had come last year, they talked clearly of housing market, of how a federal government can release their own uh, shareholdings of housing and buildings and so on. So I know forth. there was a, also a talk about putting a freeze, a temporary freeze on foreign investment. That was one thing I noticed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there were so many things in the uh, platform that was shared. And I think it, even uh, the Liberal government, if, that, if they pick that up, there, were, there are many solutions out there. It's about implementing them. It's about actually realizing the problem and 
um, giving the solution out there. Right. I, I, We've got more cranes in the sky than any major city <laughs> in North America, yet we're still sitting here seeing these problems. And if you speak to everyday voters, everyday Canadians, particularly the younger ones, there there's a feeling of of depression almost, of, of despair. Just I've heard a lot of young people say to me just within the last year, I've come to the realization and I've accepted the reality that I'll probably never own a home. And that's a sad situation. This government is ready to divide us. We need a united forum, a, a, a party that sees us in a way where we are united under one issue that is helping Canadians. And until any government or any opposition does not realize that, we will never get out of the troubles. And that's exactly what it is. My prediction is, as much as I am a very positive person, and you know that, um, I, I see a glass half full, I, I feel that Canada is really get, you know, in, in trouble in terms of housing crisis, in terms of our job market, and our rising inflation. I was watching House of Com Commons the other day, and they said, oh, inflation is a, uh, is a problem for everyone around the world. Okay. All right, yes, it is. It could be anywhere in the world, and it is. That's true. What is the solution that the government is bringing? Yeah. Are, is the government going to lower the carbon tax to, um, to solve the fuel uh, or gas prices? Um, what is the government going to do? I hear How you. Is At the end of the day, I think you're posing the, the right questions, and those are the questions that all Canadians are asking. What is the solution? We're back with Malia Shahid. I want to speak with you about council for just a moment. As somebody who is serving on a local council, but has also, of course, ran for a federal political role, what are some of the key differences and where do you see yourself going in the future? Mwani, well, I'm here to serve the town of Whitby residents. Um, I feel that our next issues are the big one for the town. The town is growing and it needs a very steady hand to make sure that the growth is managed properly. The residents and their needs are managed properly, and that's exactly where we have to steer the town in the right direction. We have a public budget meeting going on tonight. Um, every year, the staff uh, recommends a budget which is obviously our, is hiking, our property taxes are hiking. We need to make sure in our town, we have an acceptable level of business tax base and residential tax base. Until we don't increase more businesses within our township and bring more jobs in the market for people who live there, we will always have issues with our high property taxes. The single most biggest issue within the town of Whitby or any other township or municipalities, except for Toronto, maybe, <laughs> is our high property taxes. And that's exactly what we have to tackle as a council. We have to have a town which is open for business, giving the right opportunity or attracting the right kind of businesses that will balance our tax base. Right now, we have 80% as residential tax base and about 20% of businesses. And if that balance is not corrected as soon as possible, our residents are going to face higher taxes, unfortunately, because we need a new recreation center. We need many other uh, uh, things uh, for the new residents who are coming in. With. And you certainly we will have a lot of new residents, Malia, because as <laughs> we were just speaking about, we are seeing, unfortunately, a lot of people being driven out of Toronto, and they are moving into to places like Whitby, Oshawa, Durham region in general. So I would imagine there is an influx of, of new residents as well. Yeah, when a single detached home, which is just under 2,000 square footage and that sells for 1.4, we have a crisis. And that's exactly what it is. And I'm happy for the sellers who are selling this ad. But the question is, if we are going to sell this, where are we going to go? Uh, I mean, they'll have to flush in more money to buy a bigger house, a better house, or better neighborhood. I, I, I don't know. But the single most concern we have, all levels of government have to join he heads, bring jobs, bring affordability to Canadians, to Ontarians, and we have to do it fast. Stop uh, dividing, um, making sure that we're working for one 
uh, agenda is to bring relief to Canadians. We have dire times coming ahead, especially if uh, Bank of Canada tomorrow decides to rake, to uh, do a rate hike for interest, and then we will we will have concerns. We well, will have huge and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've been saying this for a while. Is you know we've been really focused on the health ramifications of COVID nineteen, and rightfully so. But we have yet to realize all of the economic ramifications of COVID. I don't think we've seen all of that just about yet. And I do anticipate things may get worse before they get better, economically speaking. Absolutely. And it's not like Canada is the only country which is going through this crisis. But I'd like to see a government that steers us in the right direction so we have less impact of all that that is coming to us. Yes, and there's no shortage of issues, as we just spoke about. Again, for the the third time, I'm going to highlight inflation, cost of living, housing. I I just don't see any issue that is not paramount for all Canadians right now, especially young Canadians. So for people like you, Malia, who who are doing the the great work of public service, uh, I thank you. And I really do wish you all of the best. It's been a pleasure having you on Tough Topics. Thank you so much, Johnny. It's a pleasure for me as well. And really appreciate you and your team for making this uh, such an easy chat, although it's tough topics, but the chat (laughs) and uh, just talking about what I feel as a person who's serving in council, but also seeing what I'm seeing when I'm filling my car with gas or when I'm going to the grocery store, what, what is exactly, or just chatting with my neighbor or residents, what is the sentiments of residents here? So happy to convey and happy to talk about it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Well, it was funny to hear the councillor mention the actual term tough topics, because as we've always said, that is the name of this show. That is the premise of this show. It is tough topics where we discuss the issues that are paramount and challenging, but key to moving us forward. Thank you to all of you at home for joining us. And as always, all voices matter.